can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Would you turn into your Bibles a book of Ephesians Oh hallelujah I want to read to you from verse 14 chapter 3 Ephesians chapter number 3 We'll begin in with verse 14 
Have you found it? Paul is writing this and he says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. He says, I bow to God in prayer. Verse 16, that he would, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in their inner man. He says, I'm praying for you that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened, invigorated with might. The word is dunamis, miracle working ability. Strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. In our Christian growth, we must give recognition to the working of God's Word in our lives and the working of the Holy Ghost. There are many who love to listen to the word they get to learn the word without the spirit without the spirit without the move of the spirit in their lives I, I, i'm not saying that they they haven't received the holy ghost i'm not saying they don't talk in tongues uh, he's writing to the ephesian church i want you to remember that the Ephesian church was not regarded as a carnal church. It was one of the most spiritual churches. And yet he said to them, I pray to God that he would grant you to be invigorated with might, with ability, with power. He says, with miracle working power. Another version says, to be strengthened with excellence by the Holy Ghost in your inner man. So that what you learn of God's word will not just be in your head, but working by the Holy Spirit in your life. He says to be invigorated with it. That means the power of that word going through and through in your life, working out that which is the perfect will of God in your life. So your Christianity will not be ordinary. That's why Paul tells us that the kingdom of God is not in word only, but in power. So the word and the power thereof put together. You know, I, I'm trying to remind you of certain things because I know that um, you're learning a lot in God's word and that's beautiful. Um, but you need to be sure to put together the spirit of what you're learning in power. The word of God working in you, the anointing of the Holy Spirit being manifested in your life, in the things that you do, in the excellence of your mind. So you're able to change things.
You know, the Holy Spirit has come to live in us. He's come to dwell in us so that we won't have an empty life. You're still there? Yeah. So the word of God in your life is God at work in you. At that point, you have come to understand that you are his representative. And always you ask yourself, what do I want out of life? What am I really after? What do I really want? It's a question you can ask yourself, what do you really want? What do you really want? If you want to know what you really want, what do you want now? What are the things you're pursuing now and for what purpose? Then you can tell what you really want. Why do you want what you want? Why do you want what you want? Why do you do what you do? Life on earth is not the end. Can God commit anything into your hands? It's so important so that you're, you know, um, there are many Christians who think that God exists for them. I mentioned that Sunday. They think that God lives for them. God is there for us. They say, after all, that's what God is there for. They think God is there to answer our prayer. No, think about it. The foolishness of it. Just to think that God exists to answer our prayers? He's there for us? That's the language of the carnal Christian. He thinks God exists for him. He thinks God is there for him. He's there for us. For us? No, he's not. He's not there for us. As a baby Christian, a carnal Christian. A baby Christian is not somebody who has just been born again, even though he's still a baby Christian. But a baby Christian is somebody who's not growing in the Lord. He's carnal. He's a babe. So they think that God exists for them. They think that God lives for them. God is there for us to answer our prayer. So anything you want, you want him to do, you send him. So he lives for them in their mind, in their thinking. They need to use him. When you grow up, you discover God doesn't live for you. He does not exist for you. He is not there for you. You are here for him. And there's a big difference. Say this with me. God doesn't exist for me. I exist for him. He doesn't live for me. I live for him. That's right. The babies think God lives for them. When you grow up, you know you live for him. Then your whole life becomes a life to please God. Then you now make your choices. Whatever you choose, whatever you want, depends on what he wants. You see that? That's a big difference. And, and that takes the stress out of life. Most people are stressed out. Because they are looking for a God who ought to be existing for them. But when you live for God, it takes the stress out of your life. No more worries. You live for him. 
You're living on someone's agenda. You don't have your plans. You live on his plans. On his terms. All your worries are gone. The struggling is over. I never worry. Never worry. Why would I worry? I don't. I can't. I don't have enough, enough sins, human sins, to worry. Nothing worries me. Why would I worry? Nothing worries me. Why? He said, be anxious for nothing. Be worried about nothing. He says, but in every... Oh, my. Not for everything. People pray about everything. They pray about this and they pray about that. And then they get frustrated because they forgot to pray about a particular thing. You know, they got to pray about everything in their lives. What do you really want to tell somebody who knows everything? You know, I, of course you know I'm not against prayer. I pray. Uh, I encourage praying. But... Um, we need to know what to pray about. Oh, I forgot to pray about this. So they could pray. Right? And then they pray about this. And then they pray about this. As though God is saying, if you don't pray about this one, I'll, I'll leave this, I'll do this, and I'll leave this, I'll do this. <laughs> what would you rather be? What does God want? What's the purpose of prayer? Have you ever thought about it? Why would somebody ask you to pray, knowing everything in your, in your mind, before that prayer, and knowing everything? He's got, he's got the plans laid out. He knows everything about you from before you were born. Who would you rather be? Thank God for the privilege of praying in the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the ability to pray in other tongues. Thank God for that groaning in the spirit that we have the ability to do. Because you see, all of that helps to position us in God's place, in God's time, for God's purpose. And it's very important. Then prayer gradually ceases to be a means of trying to get something from God to a fellowship. A fellowship. What do you want to ask for? What would you ask for? What do you want? I want to ask something. I don't know. It, it depends on how much of God's word is in your spirit. How much of God's word um, you know. What is it that any one of us would like to have that we don't have as yet that God in his word has not given us and we need to ask him in reality? What is that thing? I haven't found it. I haven't found it yet. I haven't found it. I get ashamed to ask God for anything. I don't know what to ask for. I feel like a fool trying to ask him for something. Ask for what? What is it? Is it capital for business? Did he send you? <laughs> if he sends you, all you, have, all you have to do when you're ready for it, you say, Father, I'm at this point now and I thank you because I got all that I require. 
Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. You see, that's my confession. It takes the stress out. You know, I'm calling on this and I'm trying to get, hey, hey, please, uh, you know, uh, there's this thing I want to do. I just need capital. I don't know what to do. I, uh, what? Who are you? Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten you don't belong to yourself? Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? You're not living for yourself. Maybe you are. But that's what's wrong. Change your position. Change it. You know, people are into prayer. Um, they don't understand prayer warfare. So they're going to prayer warfare. <laughs> They're praying all that kind of prayer. And they're interceding against their enemies. And all that kind of stuff. I don't know. I, you know, when I hear that um, people are doing all of that, I get to understand uh, where they really are. See, I, I, I can understand that. When they grow up, they leave that behind. See, I can't be critical of that. You can't know anything except God shows you. See, even if you said it a thousand times, it doesn't mean someone's going to catch it. So you just, you remain grateful to God for what he's taught you. And walk on. But then you become a mystery to them. A wonder. They can understand why you are the way you are. They can understand why all the things they fast and pray for you just get without asking. And there's people like that. They're, oh God, they're thinking, how do I get this? Uh, you know, they, 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 they're always worried, looking older than they really are just because they are stressed out. I see young people looking old. Because they're busy trying to fix things. See, if you go on the way you're going, if you're in that way of life, things will not change with time. The only thing that will change things is a change from your inside. You can't continue the way. You can't keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. That's not going to work. You have to change the way you do what you do to have a different result. Hello? Say this with me. All things are mine. I refuse to struggle. <laughs> you know, I tell some people, what you, what you are praying to get, some people are giving away. Then I say, what is wrong with you? What you're declaring and confessing is yours. Some others are, are giving out. Doesn't that say something? About your positioning? Does it tell you something? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Are you still there? You know, the Bible says, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. When people are filled with the Spirit, things are different. See, when you're filled with the Spirit, He can help you interpret God's word to your spirit. It can help you. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Praise God. Practice being filled with the Spirit. Practice it. Practice being filled with the Spirit. You know, some people just live the whole day canal. Throughout the day. And then he 
even when they pray. Father, in Jesus' name, just thank you. Those are called residual tongues. You know what I mean by residual tongues? They are already there. Just like on Masida, But being filled with the Spirit means that you stayed from your inside. You stayed from your inside. And the Holy Ghost rises within you. That's what, that's what assures you of your tomorrow. You stayed from within. That's where visions come from. And when the Spirit is dead within you, it's like um, you're, you're plugged in. There's a flow. And you know it. You know it. You know when it happens. To that all the time, it will strengthen your spirit and make you resistant to the things that are of the devil and of the world and of the flesh strengthen you to discern that which is of god and follow it and you find yourself always walking in the way of the lord always walking in the purpose of god for your life some people find it difficult to hear the voice of god and understand but not you it's clear to you <laughs> hallelujah it's clear to you because you stay your spirit instead of making the whole day such a canal experience hallelujah i said hallelujah are you stayed from within or did you give residual tongues? Mm. You're shaking your head. Nothing is there. Just... Mm. As though you're getting blessed. <laughs> Has anybody ever led in prayer when you were together and someone was leading prayer and the person is praying long and you, wanted, you were in a hurry, you wanted to stop and it... But in your mind, you're saying, what's the matter? <laughs> and then you think he's about to stop. And it's, so, Father, we just think, hey, Father! <laughs> <laughs> and you know God knows your heart. When it's about time to pray and, and somebody's going to pray a very short one. Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for how everything has been and uh, we are grateful. In Jesus' name. Ah, you say, praise God. And God looks at your heart. I'm sorry, Lord. Do you ever feel that way? No, you can't, you can't confess today. <laughs> but you see, your heart is what God looks at. Now, he doesn't, he's not looking at your heart to find some trouble so that he can write down some, some marks against you. That's not what he's looking at your heart for. No. Always he wants to make you that person that he wants you to be. He's in the job of making you the man or woman of his dream. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. Say this with me. I'm growing in the word of the Lord and in the way of the kingdom. I'm growing in the spirit of God. The spirit is real to my spirit. The kingdom is real to my spirit. Oh, hold on for a second. Did you get what you just said? That the kingdom is real to your spirit? 
So I live from the kingdom. I told you on Sunday, what was shared on Sunday, I said, Christ is a place. You remember that? Christ is a place. He's not only a person, he's a place. I dwell there. That's where I live. My address is Christ. Hallelujah. I live there. So you, you, you look at the world from our place. And so we know what to bless the world with. Did you know that you're greater than the world? Did you know that? The world is subject to you. The world shouldn't control your mind. I love Jesus. He said all those things which the Gentiles seek after. All those things that they seek after. Ah. Oh. All those things which the Gentiles seek after. He said, your father knows. That's your need. He knows. So, did he say, so go ahead and seek them as well. He said, seek ye first, first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things <laughs> shall be added unto you. Practice it. Practice it. Why do you want that business? Only go for it because of the opportunity that you can get for the kingdom of God. What you can do in the kingdom with it, that's your dream. Why do you want it? That's your dream. Change your way of thinking. You'll be amazed at what happens. He says all these things which the Gentiles seek after. They are the ones who said they shall be added. Added. They'll fall, those things will fall at your feet. Listen, Papa God is big. You, you didn't get it? He's big. He's big. What the Gentiles seek. And fall at your feet. Those things will fall at your feet. Say this with me. I'm greater, I'm greater than the things of this world. Of this world. One more time. I'm greater, I'm greater than the things of this world. Of this world. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm greater, I'm greater than the things of this world. You know, here's a man struggling to build a house. Say, I'm tired of being in rent. I want to build a house. Keep be building. And the building, be building. As you're building, then, like what's happening now, church is building, convocation building. Say, I have to finish this one. Okay, now, you need 10 million for this house now to finish it. Have you given 10 million in the house of God? Not yet. Ah. Don't be a fool. That 10 million from here, be smart. Carry it, put it there. You know why? You are fulfilling the scripture. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be the house you are struggling to build. God can give you many times better properties free. You know what's called free? <laughs> it 
it's a practice it's a practice it's a practice right it's a practice it's the word you're fulfilling the word see the word of God has listen the, the word is anointed the word of God is anointed it has the ability to produce in you what it talks about for example after the word on protection for example has been taught you and you have imbibed that message of divine protection and preservation you don't need prayer for protection the word which you have received into you becomes your protector what does the Bible say his truth shall be thy shield and buckler see that that's what the word does the word the word becomes in you what it talks about whatever it says if you have received it it produces that thing in you because your heart is the ground the good ground that has received the seed of God's word and what's happening now it's reproducing in you when you hear the word of prosperity and accept it and endorse it it starts producing it in your life it can't be stopped you don't need somebody to pray to make it happen the word of God concerning health when it enters into you it does the same thing it produces health you don't need somebody to pray it to happen that word oh glory to God The word in you is what you need you know a lot of people think that they need prayer oh pray for me oh, 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 oh. that thing is what you need all right when you have it inside you let me put it this way I want you to understand something in certain places Paul said pray for me that utterance may be given me all right now we need to be very careful about what we learn from God because Paul was not God. Mm -hmm. Paul was not God. It's important for us to understand that. You can't put into practice everything that Paul said. For example, he wrote to Timothy, he said, remember to bring the books and the parchments. How do you act that out? Which, which books will you carry to bring to Paul? <laughs> but it does inform you of the kind of man he was. That he was a studious man. Who was concerned about the materials that he used. It does tell you something about him. Alright? So when he said, pray for me that utterance may be given me. It said something about the man as well. It taught us something about the man as well. Who was benefiting from that prayer two groups when he said pray for me that utterance may be granted me he was asking for prayer because of those who were going to hear him then other times he asked for prayer mostly about utterance given him to make the word of God known to other people he's saying I want you to pray for me so I don't get timid about preaching this word why he said because there are many adversaries was he afraid of the adversaries? No. He wanted to use the opportunity. And he's getting the rest of us involved in this. Giving us the consciousness of the gospel. Praying for other Christians about their witnessing. Preaching the gospel. That's what he's getting across to us. He was not afraid of the adversary. What about Jesus? How many times did he tell, tell the disciples to pray? Once. He never said, pray for me, that, uh, pray for me, for, pray for me, that. No, on one occasion, because of what he was going to go through, he called them, he said, I want you to pray. For me, he said, that you enter not you. <laughs> that you enter not into temptation. 
said, my spirit is heavy. He said, pray with me here. You stay over here. So pray. And he came and said, you're not praying? And he woke up. Oh, Master, we're sorry. We're, we're tired. And he did that again and again. And said, don't worry. It's too late. What was he himself praying about? Oh, Father, I'm afraid about the, the Romans are coming. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Oh, Father, deliver me. Oh, deliver me. Did he pray for deliverance? No! He said, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. What cup? The separation from his father, which he had never experienced. It was the separation from his father that he dreaded. Can you imagine that? That was all that Jesus was concerned about. Being separated from his father because he was going to be separated from his father and identified with us. Yet, that was why he came. Identified with sinners and cut off from God. To be judged in the place of sinners. That was all he dreaded. That's, that, was, that was all. He said, pray for me. I don't know what's about to happen. No. He said, I'm going to be arrested by the Romans. And they're going to kill me. And the third day, I'll rise again. That was the attitude. Paul said, uh, Peter said to him, Master, don't talk about dying again. You're not going to die. He said, stop it. Get behind me, Satan. He said, get thee hand, Satan. For thou severest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. He rebuked him for trying to tell him he was not going to die. He wanted to die. So he was not afraid of death. It was the separation from his father when he would be made sin. The Bible says he was made sin for us who knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God. That was the problem. He had enough power when they came out to arrest him. Peter pulled out his sword and caught somebody's ear. Jesus said, put back your sword, Peter. He said, don't you think I can ask for legions of angels right now? He said, whom do you seek? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I'm the one. All right, if you want me, he's talking to the soldiers. If you want me, then let these ones go. He was in command. He wasn't going, listen, he wasn't going to allow them to arrest everybody. He protected them to the end. He said, if you want me, then let these ones go. Then they fled. <laughs> they so fled. But one of them left his shirt. <laughs> Bible students say that uh, that was Mark. <laughs> that he was there that night and fled they all fled only next morning for peter to come and say i have never seen this man before <laughs> jesus bible says when the when when peter denied jesus then he just turned and looked the door was open peter was just there and he turned and looked and peter caught his eye It's there in the book. He was so ashamed and ran out of there. He was so ashamed because he remembered what Jesus said to him. Peter, he said, I have never seen this man before. <laughs> he was so afraid of death. When he saw the way Jesus was punished, beaten with a crown of thorns, first on his head until blood came out. Aye, he said, aye, aye, aye. I don't know him. <laughs> Have you denied him? No, 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 no. What about that big Bible? They said, hey, pastor. <laughs> what did you do the next time? 
you drop the big one and put the small one here. Never deny him. They may call you names. Never be ashamed of him. The Bible says when the apostles had received the Holy Spirit and they were punished for Jesus, they were beaten because of Jesus, they went back rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus. When they call you names, be glad. When they insult you because of Jesus, don't be ashamed. Be glad. They don't know him. That's why. They think he's a symbol of reproach. But he is the creator of the world. They don't know him. Never be ashamed of your identity with him. No matter what they say. Be bold about Jesus. When you talk about him, they call you Mr. Goodman. Okay now, Mr. Goodman. We know now. Okay. Uh, don't preach to us. Ah, you're preaching to us. Ah, ah. Okay, priest. Okay, bishop. They call you bishop. Every morning you come to us. A bishop, good morning, you know. Welcome. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are a priest for God. Can you shout amen, somebody? He said he has made us what? Kings and priests. So when they call you, Mr. Pastor, say praise the Lord. <laughs> say Mr. Bishop, say praise the Lord. Some say, okay, bro. You are bro. Then when they see you talking to a sister, say, bro and sister are here. Oh. <laughs> Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Because secretly, they are watching you. One day, they would say, oh God, forgive me for what I did to that man, for what I did to that woman, because I was ignorant. Forgive me. Then you hear that that guy who was laughing at you, making fun of you, is now preaching the gospel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ye have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Can you shout amen somebody? God's grace has increased in your life. I said it has happened. Yeah. You didn't hear what I said? Yeah. Hallelujah. That's what I came. I came to minister something to you tonight. Do you understand? I was not only sharing the word with you. I was ministering something to you. That grace has increased in your life. Increased ability. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, receive it. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. 
Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.